Josh Kruger is Chief Information Security Officer at Project Hosts. It's great to see you, Josh. Thanks for joining me today. What's the evolution that you're seeing in cloud security risk management? And what's the industry dynamic to help the federal government figure that out and, and meet its needs? Yeah, I think we're starting to get away from, you know, point in time, annual assessments. We're starting to get more into agencies want continuous visibility into the security posture of the systems. They want to know if their database is all of a sudden unencrypted, or they want to know if, you know, there's exploitable vulnerabilities affecting the system. They don't want to look at a POAM or vulnerability scans that are uploaded monthly and, you know, talk to the cloud service provider for 10 minutes and talk through it. And they want that continuous visibility into the products. Um, and that's something, you know, we're working on as a company. So we have, you know, we, we're already collecting this data, all this telemetry data is everywhere that we're collecting from all these different systems that, you know, we host our systems. And so we're working on putting it in dashboards that agencies can just look at at any time or they get notifications for critical, you know, findings or things like that. So, yeah, I mean, it's really just a move towards continuous, continuous ATO, um, continuous risk posture management, essentially. Yeah. I, do the agencies have in place whatever frameworks or infrastructure they need to be able to monitor that stuff and then also do the data exchange that's necessary for it? I think there'll be some growing pains as we move towards. I mean, this is what, you know, the Federal 20X program is moving towards. It's what I think the software fast track, the SWIFT program, the DOD CIO is working on. Um, it's all moving towards this continuous, you know, continuous risk assessments. Um, Probably not right now. They're probably not, you know, fully, um, fully staffed, fully ready for the the swift, uh, you know, the transition. Mm -hmm. um, I think they probably allocate time per system per month right now to review the, you know, the risk posture. Um, so yeah, it'll be it'll be a change in the in the um, in the industry for it. But. What are the building blocks that will be helpful for them and also helpful for people like you in industry to help them achieve their goals? Collaboration. Yeah. Join the community working groups. Um, don't wait for the guidance to be published. They're putting out you know, requests for comments and all of this stuff constantly. They're having industry working groups a couple times, you know, uh, every other week or so on the different programs. So be a part of the change. Tell, tell us how you want it on the agency side. And in the industry, you know, we're going to give our best feedback that we can as well. But I think there's too many security practitioners just waiting for guidance to be published and they'll, they'll follow it or they'll want to give feedback at that time. But kind of too late at that, at that point. You need to you know, be involved early in the process. It's, yeah. it all gets flushed Is that out. getting better, do you think? Are agencies more willing to participate in that kind of dialogue than they have been in the past? I guess I haven't, I'm not super involved with the agency side. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably a better director for, you know, Fed, or a question for FedRAMP and the folks, you know, driving it. Yeah. Um, but I think they're starting to get open to it. They also realize that, um, looking at a poem, looking at a one-time assessment for a point in time isn't, Security, mm -hmm. yeah, sure. It's compliance. It's check the box. Let's get away from the check boxes and get to the, you know, actual secure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> constant well, and that's secure kind of the things. issue overall with judging success. Is I ask people a lot of the times, how do you measure success? And I guess not having a catastrophic attack is probably one measure of success, but it's probably not the only one. Sure. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it's definitely a metric we track. Did you pass the audit? How many findings did yeah. you have? This and that. But uh, I mean, a probably better one is how many exploitable vulnerabilities popped up? How did we mitigate them? Um, not only was there an attack, but could there have been an attack? Or, um, you know, actionable metrics that are evaluated in real time through automation, right? Not, you know, hey, my ISSE looked through the system. They saw that this was uncompliant. We should have been notified. It shouldn't have been a random, you know, check or a manual you know, verification, it should have, we should have already known about it, right? And then I think as you move towards that, everything else kind of doesn't take care of itself, but it, it'll all fall in line. Yeah, it sounds board. like then one of the most important things that's gonna happen, it's I guess already happening now, but will happen over the next several months and years, is the proliferation of automation throughout all these processes. Is that a fair read on my part? Oh, it's absolutely, it's key. Automate everything possible, everything possible, and then, you know, have the, the yeah you know, people verifying the automation's working properly and um, all the tests are taking care of themselves. Josh, thanks for joining me today. It's great to have you here. Absolutely, appreciate it. Thank you.